Hi, grade 11s, and welcome to our term two revision where I'm looking at the theory modules that we covered this term. So I'm just briefly going to go, go through everything. Um, so this would just be a nice overview for you. Okay, so let's get started and let's have a look at what we needed. We started with module 1.3. We were talking about storage, memory, and processing. So please remember, right? Please remember this. When we talk about the specs of the PC now, I'll be asking things like, what's the primary memory and the secondary memory? Please remember your primary memory, we're talking about RAM. And that's what they're showing here. It's 1 to 16 gigs. Um, well, it's obviously bigger than that now. Or well, you can have more than that. And then your storage, your secondary memory. Here we talk about, you know, more gigs. We talk about terabytes as well. So primary memory, RAM. Secondary memory, our hard drive. Okay. Let's move on. There we've got our memory and storage. Again, at this stage, we know the difference between memory and storage. So please go through that. Uh, this is going to become an integral part where we start throwing adverts in spec lists of PCs so that you can understand and let us know that you understand what you are reading. So there, for example, is the memory. Look at the top. An ATX case and PSU, that's your power supply unit. What this is telling me is that there's a physical case, a physical tower with a power supply unit. So is it a laptop or a desktop? It's a desktop. Then I've got my motherboard. I've got the model of the CPU. I've got my secondary memory, my primary memory, my optical drive, okay, my operating system and the version of it. Uh, I've got a physical keyboard and mouse and an 18.5 inch, remember we measured that diagonally in inches, LCD liquid crystal display screen. Okay, so there they show us um, just an example also of an external drive and then we have online storage again storing files online so we can access it anywhere we need to provided we have an internet connection so they go through some of the advantages um, and disadvantages again as i always say you should know just at least two of them you should be able to explain the concept of online storage and be able to give us two um, examples or two advantages and two disadvantages and that should that should sort of cover you okay so please do make some time and go through these things. Then the difference between your online storage and cloud computing. Now, online storage differs from cloud computing, as they're telling us, because it involves storing files. So online storage, I'm storing files onto the cloud online. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Um, whereas cloud computing, I'm, I'm actually using, you know, programs that's based on the cloud. So um if i've got a version of office that i need to connect to the internet in order to actually use that that would be an example of my cloud computer i'm actually running things from the cloud then with backing up but now we know what backups are we are making a copy of our files why because files can get damaged corrupted deleted so just bear that in mind as well there are a couple of popular backup strategies i can use cds dvds blu-rays flash drives portable hard drives and um, obviously my online uh, storage as well now they go through the process of how to write cds and dvds I'm not going to worry too much about that because they don't really ask you um, for that this is something that they do ask the difference between a backup and an archive now backup is when i'm making another copy archive when i'm actually moving those files somewhere else to use at a later stage okay um, then we start and you'll, you'll, you'll see this we start talking about troubleshooting what do we do if problems arise so managing backups problems with cds disk scanning um, please start to know these things because it does play a big role in grade 11 and grade 12. okay so you can go through that then processing we know what processing is and the role it plays um, we know our, what our motherboard is largest circuit board everything else is plugged into our cpu that does the processing our ram the cpu goes to fetch the instructions and data that it needs to work on and our rom that holds instructions when it comes to the basic hardware of the computer you know when the computer switches on it's got all those instructions in there now this is important to know because they'll ask you to describe the booting process so when a computer starts itself up you click on the start button and your rom instructions then begin to load it checks with the cpu and then the boot process begins you know, uh, when you switch a PC on, and I know some of them do that beep, like, doot, 
That's when ROM has checked through everything. Motherboard, hardware, RAM, everything is okay. Deet. Let's go. And then the booting process goes. And this is why it moves in from a black screen, a black and white screen, to the Windows logo, because it looks for the hard drive, where's the operating system installed, and then it loads the operating system. Okay, so there you can see, checks all of that, and then loads the operating system. Then the next one was dealing with your local area networks. Now, in grade, in the grade 10 revision video, you saw we started on just what a network is. Now we're going to some more detail. We already know what a network is, so I don't even have to go into that definition. Um, we know what that is. We know what a local area network is. It's a network confined to a um, specific geographical area, one geographical area, like your school or your building or things like that. Then you have your WLAN, which is a, la a, a LAN, but wireless okay and they will ask you for the difference between the two and why you would use a wireless LAN or what the advantages of using a wireless LAN would be as opposed to a normal um, cabled LAN please remember a cabled connection is always going to be faster and more stable than your wireless so just just bear those things in mind um, also your intra I'm going to say intranet <laughs> intranet okay please it's not internet this is an intranet. Sorry, I must say it like that. This is an organization, a company's private network. It has an internet-like environment. In other words, I can open up a website. I can go to the company's website, click in there, put in my username and password, and I'll navigate as I would, you know, when I browse the internet. But it is only within my company's organization. So if I go home, I can't access it because I need to be connected to the company's network. And many times you have got to go through uh, a VPN to be able to access these things. So just know the difference between those. Also the difference between your workstation and your server, your client computer and your server. Client computer workstation is going to be the same thing. Your server provides services to the network. Your clients connect to the server um, to benefit from those. Then some of the basic components of a network. I know I had a video showing you in in the class maybe i'll just do an updated one uh, your network interface controller that's your network card that device is there to allow the pc to connect to the network so you've got your physical network cable that gets plugged in okay your physical network cable gets plugged into the actual uh, network card and that is how it's able then to communicate please know the difference between that and a switch a switch is a hardware device that, as it's saying, connects computers in a network, right? So that they can communicate. Now, you might have two or three computer labs, or your, your entire school might have a network. And the switch allows one area to connect to another one so that communication can uh, occur. Also, your data transmission speeds. In other words, how fast data can move over that cable. These are questions that come up often. Um, I know this came up in the previous, in, in June's exams. So please, uh, when you see 10, 100, 1000, what that means, it's the minimum speed and the maximum speed that that cable can handle. So if it says 10, 100, it means it can handle up to 100 megabits per second of data transmission um, on that line. Okay. Also bear in mind, and they will ask you this. If all my devices, my network card, because remember when I set up a network, I need a network card. I've got a cable, I've got a switch, I've got a server with a network card, all this. If they all run at the same speed, beautiful. But let's say I've got cables that can handle 100 megabits per second, but my network cards and my switches can only handle 10 megabits per second. Then the entire network will work on 10 megabits per second. Your network speed will be controlled by the slowest device on that network. So if you want your network to run at, you know, a thousand megabits per second, all your devices must be capable of handling that thousand megabits per second. Okay. Also your wireless standards. Um, you know, what does that stand for? What does the G mean? What does the N mean? There they tell us. Those are things that you must know. Okay. And then they just mentioned your wired media, your different types of cables. Please, guys, know how to explain these cables to us. That's another tip. Yeah, you know, they just mentioned the communication, the network operating system. In other words, your operating system that has network capability. There are some operating systems that don't allow you to connect to a network. So, um, 
most of your you know your windows software does allow you to do that uh, but you would need to check on that so again software that controls all the communication security in a network uh, most have this built in as i mentioned um yeah that's that's about right so how would you know that you are connected to a network sometimes you'd see on your explorer that you maybe have extra drives um, you might see something else other than you know when, when you click on my network places you might actually see that there are other computers there and you might see you know when you want to go and print or something oh there's you know a whole list of printers with different names you know to places that like your your library or things and you're like okay but i'm sitting in the computer lab so these are all just some signs that uh, you are actually connected to a network then you want to go into the advantages again i'm not going to go through this i have done videos on this so please go and check that out know the advantages between your wireless and your cabled networks the disadvantages as well why you would choose one over the other because they'll give you a scenario and ask you to justify why the one is actually better than the other <coughs> um, then your network security your policies please just understand what that is um, and how it works uh, then they just mentioned within the network environment uh, you will use usernames and passwords obviously to keep your information safe uh, yes this is very important please guys they will ask you about the passwords and you might have to give an example of a password that would be a strong password a strong password should have a capital it should have a number it should have um, a symbol in it if you look at this password look i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna say it straight to you i'll never remember this password but it's got all the elements necessary for a strong password like it doesn't make sense <laughs> that's the first thing it doesn't even make sense but it's got a capital it's got a number it's got a percentage right it's got small letters as well so that combination is what actually creates um, a good password it should be about eight characters not the name of your girlfriend or dog or boyfriend or anything no man uh -uh. Uh, this is why you get hacked so a few rules to follow at least eight characters as i mentioned uppercase lowercase numbers special characters you know all that type of thing don't use things like astf one two three four your birthday oh no please yeah you are going to get act <laughs> then ethical use of of networks um the proper way to use it a way that doesn't infringe on anyone else a way that doesn't hurt anyone else and this is where we have things called acceptable use policies, your AUPs. Ever notice when you go to McDonald's or KFC and you want to connect to their Wi-Fi that they give you a certain amount of data for a certain period of time? That's the acceptable use policy. When you go to Baywest and you connect or a shopping center and you connect, they give you, they don't give you unlimited data. They give you a certain amount of data, a certain amount of speed um, and a certain amount of time so that you can use it, do what you need to and then get off. Okay. So it will say, you know, what the user can do, what they're permitted to do and not do, basic netiquette rules. Um, and it basically serves as, as the contract between the provider and you as the consumer. Okay, so again, you can go and read through that, uh, you know, what should be in there. Again, you don't have to know every single detail, but you should know at least two or three of those. Uh, then the next one was the browsing experience, the, re the usability of websites. Now, in grade 11, we would have started with HTML. So this plays into that. Um, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. I'm just going to breeze through this. Um, you know, your website should have proper navigation. Shouldn't be any broken links or things like that. You want to use proper fonts and the same fonts all the way through so that there's consistency. I mean, look at this site. It's got good fonts, you know, keeping it to a reasonable size. You've got your menu on the side for navigation. So all of that looks good. You can see when they go to the next page, still the same headings, still the same menu items on the side. The text is still more or less the same size and type. So it, it you know, we, you're just trying to keep that consistency going there. Also, your layout should be well designed, as you saw with the others. Your typography please don't use multiple fonts on one website you want to make sure that it's easy to read not huge fonts um, or something too small that you're going to need a magnifying glass so please guys you know just <sighs> oh, 
think. Just think before you do this. Think of your favorite website. Even think of, you know, Facebook and things like that. Um, you see how everything has been structured. So it's easy to read and easy to go through everything. That's how your web page should be. Okay. Some other factors affecting browsing, obviously privacy. You don't just click on everything. All right. Um, there's things like spyware, which is big, big business because people want to know what you are looking at and what your friends are looking at so they can target you with certain adverts, hoping that you would then buy those products. So just know what spyware is as well. Um, your profile, your online profile is based on which programs you use, how often you use them, the websites you go to. Those cookies, by the way, when you go to a website and they say accept all cookies and you click on them. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's getting your, your browsing data. Okay. Just say, just say adware. Oh, this, this is, you know, irritating, like, like really irritating. So adware is software that just downloads and it bombards you with ads. You just connect to the internet. It's ad, 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 ad. <coughs> so be careful of the free programs, sorry, that are out there. Um, and uh, yeah, this type of software can use up a lot of data. So you want to have an antivirus software to make sure that you are okay. Then the last one was finding information. Again, tying into those of you who are doing the PET in grade 11. We go from data to information to knowledge. Data that needs to be processed um or data needs not that needs to be uh, data needs to be processed to turn it into information that makes sense so we know this we have we've covered this in grade 10 already knowledge now turns insight or into insight when we extend this information by picking up patterns and gaining insight for example a shopping center allows you to connect to the wi-fi you know why so they can pick up the trend of where people are going to first which shops are more popular? What's the sort of route people take within the shops? And haven't you seen in, in um, shopping centers that they sometimes chop and change where the location of certain shops are or where the food court is and things like that? <laughs> They're using you. Um, but that's what they do so that they can work out what the best layout is for you. Why? So that you can spend money. Okay, that's the ultimate goal of a shopping center. They want to make money. So here's our problem solving cycle. We determine a strategy. Uh, sorry, we have a task definition. Then we determine the strategy. We implement it and then we reflect. So they talk a bit about questions, the role of questions. Um, I think in grade 10, we spoke about the open and closed question as well. We know we can, you know, these days we have an unlimited supply of resource material. When I was growing up, I remember in primary school having to do um an assignment on world war ii and i had to go get this to the library i know some of you don't go there <laughs> but i had to go to the library to go and find books then re you know actually open them and read them in order to extract information make photocopies and things like that and then reword it uh and if i was quoting you would quote with appropriate sources you know appropriate references um and that's how i'd create my assignment not this copy and paste from google but we've got so much uh, more resources these days. Then some of the data processing techniques, you know, we use Word, we use Excel, we use graphs, you know, all these different things. It's just showing you um, what we can actually do. Effective reporting, they mention as well, where they talk about the report, the introduction, you should have a main body and a conclusion. You want to look at things like copyright, intellectual property, correct referencing and bibliography. This is now where you're putting everything together to present this report um, or assignment. These are things we should be looking at. An electronic presentation provides a useful quick overview and summary of the report. They mention in this because in grade 11, uh, for those doing the Department of Education, Pat, you will be doing this. Okay, so please bear that in mind. And they mention the information management cycle. Again, you can go through this and really ask too many questions on that. Um, again, this is this is path related the task definition what a task definition is they give us a few examples um, Yeah Really that's basically it we by now we know what the task definition is the types of questions the levels of questions as well again This is 
very specific to the pack that all of you are doing. Okay, so I'm just going to breeze through that. Um, these are just when you busy with your questionnaire, uh, when you're trying to ask questions. Remember that, that table that you would be creating where you are asking questions to guide your research? Those three tables that you're supposed to have. Okay, so this is what would then help you. You could conduct a survey as well because remember with your pet, what's going to happen is you're going to conduct a questionnaire slash survey and convert that into a spreadsheet which you are going to then draw um, information from. <clears throat> so there are different ways to do surveys. Very important because they have asked in the, in the question papers already the difference between a questionnaire and a survey and why you would choose one over the other. Okay. And then you have your types of surveys. Um, they, they just mention a few and give us some details. That's obviously an electronic survey. Um, setting effective survey questions. So these could be, you know, mentioned as tips when um, conducting your survey or when putting survey questions together, what should you be looking at? Okay. Uh, yeah, that's all fine. The effective layout. How has your survey been laid out? Again, guys, you can just go through this, um, checking the quality of the information. You know, you know, they don't ask too many questions on this, but again, just go through it. Um, you should have covered this as well. And again, this is based, this is based on what we've been doing. Okay. It's based off the path. And yeah, I think that is about it. Sorry that I'm <laughs> throwing that up now. Um, let me just. Okay, so um, that basically brings us to the end of everything that was covered in term two. So guys, if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments. I will be doing a prac on this as well um, so that you can see the prac modules that we've covered for the term. But this is your theory for term two.